Last week, you know, I shared a message on Paul, how Paul had learned to rejoice and tap into the power of joy in every situation. And we looked at one instance in Paul's life. He was shipwrecked. Then, he got, then when he got ashore, he was snake bitten. Then after he shook the snake off in the fire, did him no harm, he had a three-month healing revival. Yay! <laughs> and you look at the apostle Paul's life, that's kind of like how his whole life went, you know, Ship, shipwrecked, snake bitten, and a revival. Uh, you know, he was either rocked with rocks and left for dead or man, you know. So a lot of times we think, well, we have attacks. Oh, boy. Everybody does. Jesus said, in this world you shall have tribulation, but he didn't end it there. He said, but be of good cheer. When? Right in the middle of the attacks. Does the Bible teach us that? Yes, it does teach us that. Have you ever noticed that the ways of the kingdom are totally against the ways of man? How many of you know that besides me, you know? The spirit says this and your flesh says the other. That, that part of you that's still yet to be renewed, you know. Uh, I'll give you some examples. Apostle Paul says, don't fret or have any anxiety about anything. Everybody says, are you serious? Holy Ghost through him was serious. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. Philippians 4, 7, 8. But in everything, let your requests be made known unto God. And then he says with thanksgiving hallelujah so right in the middle of troublesome situations I'm not gonna worry I'm not gonna fret I get little songs at, during times like that I'm not gonna worry I'm not gonna fret Jesus has never failed me yet I'm not gonna worry I'm not gonna fret you're crazy pastor Steve no I'm not I'm protecting my heart and releasing my faith faith is an act 
So you can worry if you want to, but I don't want to. And Jesus said through Paul, the Holy Ghost said, you don't have to. In fact, he said, don't do it. Don't fret, worry, have any anxiety about anything, but in the midst of everything, with prayer and supplications, let your requests be made note unto God with thanksgiving. And then the peace that passes all understanding shall mount guard over your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. When? In the midst of tribulation. When? In the midst of trouble. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you with me? For us to enter into fullness, we got to start believing and releasing our believing. Can I hear an amen? amen? Hallelujah. We could go through so many things. You know, somebody came up to me with a scripture as we were greeting people. And, it, and they had a scripture from Proverbs. I said, I received that and I believe that. They said, it's the glory of a person to cover over an offense. What's the world do when you get offended? Arrgh! You fight back. You kick back. You gripe. You say, I don't know who they think they are. Who do they think they are? How, how do they have the audacity to offend me like that? That's the world. What's Jesus' kingdom? Rejoice, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Love covers over offenses. God bless you, brother. Come here. Let me kiss you on the cheek after he's just cussed you out. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. The devil doesn't know what to do that with that. It just shocks him. The world doesn't know what to do with that. It shocks them. For, the, for them to blatantly say something offensive to you, they got to want to fight with you. But you know how you fight it? You don't fight flesh with flesh. You fight it with the spirit. And the weapons of our warfare are not fleshly. They're not carnal. But they're mighty through God to demolish everything that the devil would send against us. Amen? So we respond with love when other people are wanting to fight. It's hard to fight with a lover. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. And God's glory will come upon you. Peter said, Peter wrote the, the first epistle of Peter. It's about the sufferings of the believer. Do you know what the believer is to suffer? Persecution. Not sickness, not the works of the devil, not all that mess of the devil, but persecution. Pastor isn't persecution inspired of the devil. Yes, it is, but it's for the gospel's sake. And when you rejoice, what did Jesus say? When people falsely accuse you or falsely judge you, say all manner of evil against you for my name's sake, what did he say to do? Rejoice. He actually said to leap for joy. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and the devil goes, oh, that didn't work. Man, that didn't work. You know, don't, don't you like to prove that the devil's defeated? Prove that to him. You've heard me tell this. I'm going to share it again anyway. Uh, before I went to Bible school, I went to Metro State. Everybody knows what kind of environment that is, downtown Denver. Ha, I got to know downtown Denver really well. And so during that time, we were in the midst of the Jesus movement, Jesus people movement. And I got these Jesus people newspapers. I kept some, and I still got them in my office drawer. They're like 40, 45 years old. Bright color, bright print. And... Uh, it's hippie all the way. And I liked them then and I like them now. So it's presenting the gospel hippie style. Yay. So all over Metro State, I'm distributing these Jesus People newspapers. One day I get an envelope. Chandler, I remember this. We're living by Sloan's Lake 2930 Equipment. And I get this envelope. And on the outside of it, it said, the only good Christian is a dead Christian. That's what it said. Yes, sir. That's what it said. I go, uh-oh, never quite had one like this before. And I open it up, and the guy proceeds to rail against Christians. Would you call that persecution? I mean, that's not bad, like getting beat with rocks, you know. Come on. And so when I read it, immediately I remembered what Jesus said. Count it all joy when people speak against you, falsely accuse you, revile you for my name's sake. And I was the only one home. She wasn't home from work yet. And I began to jump. I began to jump. And I began to praise God. And I began to spin. And you know what happened? The glory of God came on me. And the joy of the Lord came on me. And I was like, yay. And by the time my wife got home and I showed her that envelope, I wasn't phased the least bit. Hallelujah. Did, didn't even hardly dent my joy level, even initially. In fact, it caused the joy of God inside me to flame up and go higher and higher than if I had never gotten that letter. Amen? 
So can you see the ways of God are not the ways of man? How many knows that? All right. So let's believe. Let's start believing. I, I had a newcomer make an appointment with me a few weeks ago, and they hit the nail on the head. Uh, I got a word of knowledge for them. And I said, they were telling me about all the troubles they'd been through. It was a lot of them. And I got a, got a word of knowledge for this person, and I said, uh, what kind of accident have you been in that's caused trauma in your life? You know what the person said? I've had 41 accidents. Named how many car wrecks, how many this, how many that, how many the other. And so I said, okay, before you go, my wife and I are going to lay hands on you for that. And the power of God is just going to uh, obliterate all that. And they were like, oh, please do. And they were receptive. But you know what they said before we got through talking? This is what they said. They said, you know what I really believe God has been telling me? It's so simple. He's just been telling me to believe him, believe his word. I go. Now, most people don't like to hear that when they go to counseling. So Holy Ghost had already told this person that before I could even tell them that. And I said, that's right. How would that practically look? And they began to give me practical examples. And I said, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And you know, you know, with all of us, if we would just believe God, faith is an act. It's not middle ascent. Middle ascenders will say, Oh, I believe that, and then they don't act on it. And I, I'm going to tell you, no, you don't really believe it. Because when you release your believing, it'll be manifested at least from the words of your mouth. You know, Jesus said, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. What's in the heart will spill out the lips. So when we get all this junk, and we do, and you can't live in this world, it's a junky world. Isn't it? It's a, it's a world that hates, beheads people, it's a nasty, nasty world. Well, pastor, should we just be depressed from now till the coming of the Lord? We should rejoice, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. Again, I say rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. During Paul's day, the emperor, or was he a dictator, or what was he? Nero lit his long walkway to his palace with Christians dipped in tar. And Paul says, you know what? I am going to have a rejoicing fit all the way through my life. I will serve the Lord with gladness. I will come before his presence with singing, and I will rejoice. And again, I will rejoice. Hallelujah. Pastor, you've lost your mind. I've traded the flesh mind for the Christ mind. Can you do that with me? Hallelujah. Amen. Can you do that with me? All right. So, Pastor, you've been on a joy kick here lately. After last service, last week's service, both first and second. I had, I don't know, six or eight people come up and say, man, I needed that. Man, that's what I needed to hear. Hallelujah. That was a word right for me. And I go, you know what? That's a word for all of us. And, and we did this in prayer this week. I said, let's pray that we be a joy-filled, praising church from now until the coming of the Lord. Amen? Let, let's see how high we can get. How high can we get in praise and worship and joy and dancing? Hallelujah. How high can we get? Let's do that so that when the Lord comes, he finds a people ready and welcoming him, and our hearts are beaten with his, and we are ready to go, and we just shoot out of this place to his glory. Amen? Hallelujah. So come on. Come on. Things are going to get worse. I'm not trying to be a bad news bearer, but Jesus told us that. Jesus forecasted the weather, and he said, the weather's going to get worse before I come. But it doesn't have to get worse in your heart. It can get better and better and brighter and brighter, and you can burn more and more in your heart. Can I hear an amen? amen. All right. Pastor, I don't feel like rejoicing. Join the club. <coughs> your flesh will never feel like rejoicing. Tell your flesh, you are going to rejoice. Shut your mouth. We're going to, here we go. And we are going to rejoice. And let your spirit have your mouth and rejoice in the Lord every day. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Here we go. I want to look at the power and the place of joy that we see in the Word of God. It is tremendous. It's tremendous. And today's church, we can't underestimate this. We've got to enter into this full board. Look at Psalm 511 from the Amplified. Psalm 511. But meditating on this scripture, I really see this now. This is a word for every individual believer, but I really see this as a word for leaders. 
Because leaders are the one that puts the can or the lid on the can of what happens when believers get together. Let's take the lid completely off and blow the walls of the can out. Can I hear an amen? <laughs> Look at this. But let, do what let? But let all those who take refuge and put their trust in you, God, let them rejoice. Let them ever, everybody say ever, ever. Does ever mean forever? Does ever mean always? Does ever mean all the time? Yes. Let them ever sing and shout for joy. Do what? Shout for joy. Hallelujah. It's time from now to the rapture to shout. So do what now? Do what? Let all, everybody say all. all. Let all those who take refuge and put their trust in you. What, why do you ever need to take refuge? There's storms going on. Why do you need to take refuge? Things are going haywire. Who is your hiding place? He is. Where do you take refuge? In your hiding place. While you're in your hiding place, are you okay? You're okay. So if you've taken refuge, sing all the time. Sing unto God, sing praises to his name. Sing unto God, sing praises to his name. Exalt him that rideth upon the heavens by his name. Exalt him that right when? Well, in the middle of a storm. By his name, Yah. J-A-H. The only one I know in here that calls God Yah is John Pregel. Isn't that right, brother? John Pregel. He'll send me text messages. John will say, I just want to encourage you, pastor, he says, in the mighty name of Yah. And then John has got his own English. I have not met anybody that talks like John or writes like John. It's a mixture of kind of like royal knighthood Hebrew English. I like it. When I see John, I just, he makes me smile. I give him a big hug. Hallelujah. He was at our prayer meeting Wednesday. Breath of fresh air. So, rejoice before him and rejoice before him and rejoice, rejoice before him. Hallelujah. When? Ever. When? All the time. How many? All of us. Who lets them do it? Leaders. You better let them do it. <laughs> let them. All who take refuge and put their trust in you rejoice. Let them ever sing and shout, shout for joy. Because, God, you make a covering over them. Oh, here we go. And you defend them. Hallelujah. Let those also who love your name. Do you love his name? Amen. Let them also who love your name be joyful in you and be in high spirits. What does that mean? Be in high spirits. You're kind of beside yourself. That's okay. Be in high spirits. You know, people say, I don't know if you ought to ride that horse. It's kind of high spirited. And, you know, here's the horse. I don't know if you should ride that horse. He's kind of high spirited. We need to be high spirited, Holy Ghost, on fire, in time, worshipers of the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No pride, see. Leave my pride by my side. I'll be calm. Even more undignified than this. Oh, pastor, pastor, I'm going to let you. Hallelujah. Let's be high-spirited. Let's shout for joy. Let's ever sing. Let's praise our God right in the middle of the storm and just say, ha, 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 devil, you have not seen anything yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He defends us. He puts his covering over us. Hallelujah. Now, Pastor, I don't always feel like it. That's okay. Tap into the stream of joy inside you. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. you got joy in you. Joy is Holy Ghost. Joy is from God. Joy is supernatural. Joy is already inside you. And if you'll act in faith like I did on 2930 Equipment, jumping when I got the letter that said the only good Christian is a dead Christian, the joy of God will spring up in you. It will cover you. You'll get covered with the oil of gladness. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah access it. You don't need outside stimuli to be joyful. In fact, the world can't give you the God kind of joy. You can't snort it up, shoot it up, drink it up, pill pop it up. You can't get it that way. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. All these songs just flood me, man. The world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. Ha ha. Drugs didn't give it. Alcohol didn't give it. Pills didn't give it to me. And nothing can take it away. Hallelujah. The devil can't take it away. 
in Jesus' name. Now look at Psalm 1611, New King James Version. God, you will show me the path of life. That's what he always does. You're going to show me the way to go, the way to walk. You're going to show me the life-giving path, always. In your presence is fullness of something, fullness of joy. What? In your presence is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So we got the prophetic word today. That's our place in his presence, at his throne. There's fullness of joy, but there's fullness of everything. There's fullness of love. There's fullness of grace. There's fullness of peace. There's fullness of healing. There's fullness of health. There's fullness of guidance. There's fullness of everything in the presence of the Lord. Can I hear an amen? But he puts at the top of the list here in Psalm 1611, joy, fullness of joy. Hallelujah. We're talking about Mark Hankins. I heard him tell this. Mark makes me laugh. I, I told Pastor Jimmy, I said, how can a guy get over such good truth and he's got you laughing so hard, you're wiping tears off of your cheeks as he's giving you the truth? That's, that's got to be an anointing of God upon that brother's life. Here's what he said. He said, I was leaving the Lord's presence from my room. I was in my room the other day. I'd spent time with the Lord in prayer, and I was leaving the Lord's presence, and the Holy Spirit asked me, quote, Aren't you going to dance before Father before you go? He said, Holy Spirit said, Father likes dancing. Whoa. Mark said, well, I hadn't planned on it. That's what he told the Holy Spirit. <laughs> well, I hadn't planned on it. He said, he keeps walking away from his room. And the more he's walking, he's feeling you need to go back in there and dance before the Father. So he just did a U-turn, and he went back into his room. <laughs> he said, oh, he said, i tell you what, it was by faith. He said, he's funny. He said, boy, I'm not much of a dancer. He said, I started moving my feet, you know. And he said, I didn't feel any joy. He said, at first I felt very self-conscious, and I thought, oh, no, I've got a bigger problem than I thought because I'm feeling self-conscious by myself. <laughs> and he said, he said, it showed me what the Holy Ghost was really after. He said, I need some, I need some breakthrough on self-consciousness. So he said, I put a little more infinite into it. Begin to dance. Begin to say, yay, Jesus, you are king. You are glorious, Jesus. You are victorious. And he said, it wasn't but about two minutes. And the, and the oil of gladness and the oil of joy began to bubble up in my life. And I just had like a five or ten minute dancing session before the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, the anointing came on me. And he's become more of a dancer. Amen. Pastor, I'm not a dancer. Oh, join the club. Join the club. Hallelujah. I don't understand what this stuff will do for you. Your mind will never understand it. You know, do, do a study on dancing in the Bible before the Lord. You'll be surprised how much it's in there. Do a study on joy. You'll be surprised how much it's in there. Do a study on rejoicing, and you go, wow, I am a rejoicing person. We're to have a rejoicing church. God's people are to be a rejoicing people. Hallelujah. We can always rejoice. Amen? Can, can I hear an amen on that? I don't know, Pastor, if I can always rejoice. Time out. Yes, you can. What did Jesus say? Rejoice that your names are written where? In heaven, in the book of life. Amen. Oh, I tell you what, you can always rejoice. Hallelujah. I heard a brother say, if God were to give you a five-second glimpse of hell, which I don't know that we could hardly take, and then turn around and give you a five-second glimpse of heaven, You'd, be, you'd have enough fuel to rejoice all the rest of your days on earth. Amen. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Hallelujah. We got reason to rejoice. We got reason to shout. We got reason to dance. We always do. So Brother Mark said, boy, I learned rejoicing and dancing before the Lord will put your flesh down. And it will cause you to enter into a, a new level of boldness and freedom. Amen. I just laugh. You know, I, I can read some people's hearts and minds sometimes. You know, well, I've always been a reserved person. I've always been, you know, kind of an introvert personality. <laughs> I come from a long line of introverts. The shank side of the family, Germans, way, way, way back, way, way, way. Your flesh just prefers not to get involved. 
Tell your flesh, you are not gonna, you're not in control here. You're not in control. And we are going to believe God. And when it says, let them all shout, I'm shouting too. When it says, let them all rejoice, I'm rejoicing too. Hallelujah. And when it comes time to dance, I'm dancing too. Well, Pastor, I never was a dancer. I didn't like to go to prom. Me either. If I hadn't had such a pretty girlfriend, I wouldn't have gone. Right here. Oh, is that right, Chandler? I hated dances. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh. And I tried, didn't I? We, I, I had a, a childhood friend, Margo. This was during the days of James Brown, and Margo came from Louisiana. So she said, she said I heard you're going to the dance with Chandler. And you know, I'm like sweating bullets. And she said, uh, she'd be like my little sister. She said, I'm going to come over and give you dance lessons. She did. I'm not kidding. Chandler grinned, and she remembers this. Papa's got a brand new bag. I said, what does that move, Margo? That's the funky chicken, you know. So I, tr I, tried to, I tried to imitate her. I never felt comfortable, but I did it, and I did the jerk at the dance. I felt like a jerk. Why'd you do that, Pastor Steve? Because I loved her. All right. Why do we do this unto the Lord? Because really, I really love him. Amen. He's worth it. He's worthy. He's worthy. So... If he tells all of us, he's got to be telling the leaders, I believe, when he says, let them, them want to. A lot of them want to. So when he says, let them be joyful, let them rejoice, let them shout for joy, then let's let them do it. Can I hear an amen? Well, we're not that kind of church. Well, you need to change it. Become that kind of church. Amen? Become, become a Bible church. Hallelujah. <laughs> look at Psalm 27.5. We're going to look at the Amplified. Psalm 27.5 and 6. Notice, it's always in the day of trouble. That's when your flesh doesn't want to do it. For in the day of trouble. When? In the day of trouble. Now, our flesh has a knee-jerk reaction. How does your flesh react when trouble hits you? Oh, no, not again, not again. Ha! Tell your flesh, shut up and jump and shout and dance about. Well, I'm telling you, that's a weapon against the devil. I'm telling you it is. It's a weapon. It's a weapon. On top of all that, it'll, it'll protect your heart. It'll cause your heart not to be weighed down with grief, worry. Oh, no. Fretting? What are we going to do? Oh, no. Your, your unrenewed heart and mind acts like there is no God. Oh, wait a minute. Be still, oh, my soul. I'm hidden in the secret place of God. I'm in, I'm in his tabernacle. I'm in his temple. He's covered me. He's my covering. He is my shield. He is my fortress. I will say of the Lord. I will say of the Lord. And you have to say it. Amen. You have to release your believer at least by saying it. Hallelujah. Say it. Say it. And watch what happens. He will lift your head high above that troublesome situation. Let's read this. For in the day of trouble, he will. Everybody say he will. He will. Hide me in his shelter. Yea, God. In the secret place of his tent, he will. Hide me. He will. Set me high upon a rock. Yea, God. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Where are your enemies? All around you. What are they doing? Trying to cause trouble. Ha, ha, ha. I will rejoice. In his tent I will offer something. Sacrifices and shoutings of joy. Hallelujah. Shoutings of joy. I'm going to offer that to God. See, our 21st century unrenewed minds, we don't want to do that. We don't even think that way. Wait, it's trouble. I know it's trouble. But what's he going to do for you? Lift you up, put you up high on a rock in an inaccessible place. Cover you, protect you. His angels are in charge over you. Start shouting, 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 shouting. That's what he says here. Shouting of joy. And then I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. When? In the day of trouble. Act like God is bigger than anything you're facing. Act like God is bigger than this troublesome situation. Act like God is bigger than anything you could ever face in life. What would be the worst thing you could face in life? Being martyred? Read Fox's book of martyrs. My, 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 my. Talk about the glory of God. They begin to praise God as they're tied to a stake with flames coming up. And the glory of God came upon them. And they went out into heaven with shouts of joy. Come on. Hallelujah. That is like, that's like the ultimate test of this whole power of joy situation. Amen? Famous story of two guys that were going to be martyred. And uh, one of them said, listen, if you go first, 
Will you raise up one finger if God's grace is sufficient? So that guy, that guy did go first. And as he's going up in flames, he raised up two fingers. He said, more than enough. More than enough. More than sufficient. Hallelujah. 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 Yay, Jesus. In the day of trouble, he will, he will be all that I need. Hallelujah. When you're trusting, when you're really believing, you are rejoicing and shouting. Thank you, Jesus. Think about this. The devil's not all-knowing. He cannot read your mind. So just when you shout and when you sing and when you dance, he'll look at that and go, wow, they're not reacting. I can't push that button anymore like I used to on that. They're not reacting there like they used to. Uh-oh. This is not working. <laughs> and just tell him, it's not working, devil. And nothing you can do against me can work. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Mark Hankins, he said he was in a meeting. This was shortly after the, the Holy Spirit told him that Father likes dancing. Can you imagine? And he said, I'm in a meeting, and we got to the end of the message, and, and people began to rejoice. And he said, when they began to rejoice, things came unglued. They absolutely came unglued. But he said, the night before, I was just watching a program. And he said they kept running the same commercial at every break. How many of you, how many of you occasionally watch a program? You, by the end of that program, if it's 30 minutes long, you can repeat the same commercial, you know. And you can get all of these for $19.99. Plus, if you sign up now, you'll get a special bonus. And you just go through the whole thing with them, you know. So he's been watching the same commercial. He, he said, here's what it said, quote, he said, I was watching this program. They played that same silly commercial over and over. Here's what the guy said when he came on. Hel Hello, neighbor. Tires ain't pretty, but everybody needs tires. Mark said, it's just over and over. Hello, neighbor. Tires ain't pretty, but everybody needs tires. Ten minutes later, hello, neighbor. Tires ain't pretty, but everybody needs tires. Mark said, I almost wanted to yell at the screen, shut up and quit playing that guy. Quit, you know. Hello, neighbor. Tires ain't pretty, but everybody needs tires. So he said, the next service, my word, people broke free, began to express their faith and their love towards God. He said, people shouted, people sang, people rejoiced, people danced. He said, the men were stomping around like this. And he said, then the lady started running laps around the auditorium. Second service last week. We had about 20 ladies running laps in here. I just jumped in and ran with them. We just ran laps around, around the building here. Hallelujah. So it was that kind of a service. And he said, I'm watching everybody. And as clear as a bell, he said, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, hello, neighbor. Faith ain't pretty, but everybody needs to release their faith. <laughs> hello, neighbor. Faith ain't pretty, but everybody needs to release their faith. Amen? It can't engage if you don't release it, and you release it with an act. And sometimes those acts are shout. Sometimes those acts are singing. Sometimes those acts are worship, bowing. Sometimes those acts are dancing. Sometimes those acts are jumping. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at Psalm 32, 11. Amplified. Be glad in the Lord. Okay. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. Okay, okay. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous. Shout for joy. All, everybody say all. all. Shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Now, if you're born again, you are righteous. You receive the gift of righteousness by your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Shout for joy, all you righteous. When? In the middle of trouble. When? When you're attacked. When? When it looks bad. When? When you've lost this, that, or the other. Who was it this week? Who was it? They said they had lost their keys in their own house, and they were about ready just to tear the house apart. Anybody ever been there before? Lost your keys in your own house. All right, what are you going to do? I, I know what I've done before, huh, Chandler? Griped. I can't believe it. Where is it? Ah, maybe the kids took it. And she goes, quit blaming other people. <laughs> Don't you? She says that. Okay. So why not just say, Oh, praise God, the Holy Ghost knows where my keys are. Hallelujah, the Holy Ghost knows where my keys are. He will guide me to my keys. He will guide me to my keys. 
You know, now I've done that before too. And you know what's happened time after time? It's not even strong in here. A thought will come to me. Look under there. I look under there and there's my keys. I'm like, hallelujah. And I give him praise some more. Amen. Hallelujah. So be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous. Shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Shouting is good. It's good. I, I did a message a few years ago. It was just on shouting. It was just on shouting. And at the end, I had everybody shout. There, there was an older fellow behind Chandler, a little older guy, and Chandler said, I can't believe that man shouted like five men. So I found him out in the hall before the next service, and I, and I laughed, and I told him what Chandler said, and what was it that he said um, when he was in the military, they trained him to shout from his diaphragm? I said, Chandler said, well, I believe that, because that guy had like five men volume shout. You know, just a, a little man. Are those weapons? Yes. What's it do, though, to your heart? It causes you to tap in. You draw out of that well of salvation where there's joy, 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 joy. And your heart is protected, and you don't get frustrated, and you don't get hard to live with, and you don't become an irritator yourself. Amen? Hallelujah. What's irritation breed? More irritation, you know? Oh, I've been there. I've done that. You get irritated, then people get irritated at you because you're irritated. And it just breeds more irritation. But what does joy do? Joy breeds joy. Joy will come off on other people. Hallelujah. I I've told you this. I'm going to tell you this again. On one of our trips overseas in India, we came into a village. You remember this, Leona? We came in. She was on the team. Came into a village. The first night, just, it was haywire. Like everything, just the wheels came off the wagon. And I was a preacher that night. These people never seen anyone outside of their tribe, so they never seen white people. We had their attention. But the devils in that area didn't like that we had their attention. So I'm preaching. And I, I only preached about 10 minutes. The women sit on the left, the men sit on the right, and some, I bet you it was a guy, how many of you want to bet? Threw a live snake right in the middle of the women's section. Oh man, it went berserk. I stepped back from the po podium like this. And I'm getting righteously mad. And the dust is flying, and the women's got, the women have their sandals off, and they're, beat, they're beating the snakes to death. The dust settled. Okay. Everybody, my attention. Everybody, look up here. Listen to me. I start preaching again. I get to just building up to Jesus. Right before I get ready to tell them who he is, that he's Jesus, a demon-possessed lady went off. I'm like, oh, I don't like devils. I told one of our brothers on our team that was sitting on the end of the platform, go cast that thing out of her. We'd been doing it so much by then, huh, Leona? Casting out devils was like, would you tie my shoe? I mean, it's about like that. So... He went down, cast the devil at her, got her free in about two, sec two minutes, came back, sat down. Here we go again. It's wearing me out. I look at my team. They're all falling asleep on the platform because of a demonic influence. I looked at Pastor Dan, and Pastor Dan goes, demons, he's going. I'm like, oh, it did not go well. We're three nights at that place. So finally, I just brought it to an end, and I said, we'll be back tomorrow night. We're not praying for a soul tonight. I just left them. So we went back, and on the way back, we said, okay, we're meeting in our room. We're coming before the presence of the Lord. I believe it was 6 a.m., and uh, we're taking care of this. We're not having another night like we had tonight. So remember this, Charlie? You were there, too. So... I get to the room on time, but a couple of the other brothers had gotten there early. And before I got there, they'd already secured the victory. They are rolling on the floor laughing, laughing, laughing in the spirit, laughing, laughing, tears rolling down their face, laughing. I said, no need to intercede, guys. I just jumped in and laughed with them, laughing, laughing. The, the people in the neighborhood, we were laughing so loud. The people in the neighborhood came in. And they were, they were packed in the windows, no glass on the windows, seeing what's up with these crazy white people from the other side of the globe. And we are laughing, laughing, laughing. Guess what happened the next two nights? The blind got their sight. The deaf heard. Ah, ha, 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 devil. 
Ha, 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 ha. But we laughed our way to a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Shouts of joy. Shouts of joy. That same village, God did so much in that village that when we got ready to leave, they didn't want us to leave. They cried. They cried and didn't want us to leave. I can remember hanging out the, hanging out the car door, just touching them as we, as we left. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. So I don't care what the devil tries to do. Devil, you're under my feet, and I can't, I can't be beat. You're under my feet. Hallelujah. So where's my God? He's where he always is. He is king. He reigns. He is victorious. I got a lot to laugh about, to shout about, and I can rejoice if for no other reason that my name is written in heaven. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to leave you with Wigglesworth. Quote, Smith Wigglesworth. God, help us understand this, he says. It's time people knew how to shout in faith as they contemplate the eternal power of our God, to whom it's nothing to quicken and raise the dead. I come across some who would be giants in the power of God, but they have no shout of faith. I find everywhere people who fail. He's talking about Christians. Even when they're praying, simply because they're just breathing sentences. You can't get the victory that way. You've got to learn to take the victory and shout in the face of the devil. It's done. There is no man who can doubt if he learns to shout. Say that with me. There is no man who can doubt if he learns to shout. One more time. There is no man who can doubt if he learns to shout. Wigglesworth says things will be different and tremendous things will happen. Hallelujah. Every time you rejoice, you shout, you sing and shout for joy. You dance for joy. You're saying, devil, you lose. Jesus and I have won. Father, you are greater. And for no other reason, Father likes dancing, Holy Ghost says. Father likes dancing. Amen. So let's stand up, everybody.